welcome to my channel or welcome back if it's your first time. A lot of people are planting gardens for the first time or taking their, growing their own food a little more seriously because of our recent understanding of just how potentially fragile our uh, food supply system is. So you can focus your energy into worry or you can focus your energy into solutions and empowerment. This is the start of my spring greens garden. So a lot, the hardest part when you do raised beds or any kind of garden is getting good soil, you know, affording good soil. It can be really expensive. We just hit a sale up at Lowe's and they actually had organic soil, pretty good quality for $2.50 a bag, but a bag doesn't go very far. A simple box like this, just one of these boxes, could easily take oh, six to eight bags to fill. So multiply that by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you've got a lot of money for the average person. So I take on, um, I do something called lasagna gardening, and I have some other videos. I'll have to remember to put the link below. And that's where you use basically garbage and things you would throw away, organic material from around your yard to build up your raised bed from the bottom up and then cover the top with about six inches, four to six inches of your good soil. So instead of having to use so many bags of bagged soil or compost, you, this is eventually gonna break down. It's also gonna become a worm farm underneath once the earthworms discover it. It's also going to create heat because as it decomposes, the decompos decomposition process creates heat, which is amazing for germinating seedlings because seedlings actually germinate through heat and not so much through light. So these are my seedlings that I started just four days ago, four to five days ago, and look how magnificent they are. If you're wondering, what is that crazy white powder everywhere? Well, I try to keep things as organic as possible, but as soon as I planted my basil, I, uh, the basil got attacked right away pretty aggressively. If you do not see the insects that are eating your seedlings or eating your plants on the plants, like a caterpillar or a beetle, it's a night, you know, it's one of those night insects. And a night insect can take out your, all your hard work in just a night or two or three. Generally, the night insects that devour tender seedlings are earwigs and slugs. So what this powder is, is a, an organic preemptive strike to protect my seedlings and tender greens from the earwigs and the slugs. What this powder is, is diatomaceous earth. And I will put that in the link below also. I got a big 10 pound bag. It was pretty affordable via Amazon. And on a microscopic level, it's volcanic powdered rock. And they're like little tiny microscopic razor blades. And insects hate them. All insects hate them. And once they crawl through it, it cuts up their skin and dries them out and they die. Yet it's really good for the soil and it's non-toxic. Though when you're applying it, because it's a fine powder, you really, really, really want to wear gloves and a mask because it's easily ingested and can really irritate your lungs, especially if you have respiratory issues like I do. Asthma. So I've got my diatomaceous earth, and it literally, as soon as you plant your seeds, get your bait down, get your diatomaceous earth scattered around as soon as those greens pop up. Um, there's also a really great multi-purpose, fairly organic bait that ortho makes. I'm gonna go find it in the garbage right now. My potatoes, because this, uh, I put this bait out as a preemptive strike every springtime. And it handles a myriad of different insects. And it's, to my knowledge, it's just boric acid. Okay. There we go. Yeah. See this? It's just boric acid, which is very organic. This kills ants, cockroaches, crisp earwigs, slurvish slugs, and snails. This stuff is great. 
and I scatter this around the house in early spring and have it takes care of all the ants because they literally take the bait back to their nest. It wipes everything out. And these are all the bugs that are going to take out your tender greens. And a little bit goes a long way. Now, if you're, of course, you always want to um, put any kind of insecticide or any kind of funky stuff mainly around the perimeter of your garden, very close to the garden, and not, in general, directly on your seedlings and plants unless it's 100% organic and you're positive, like this diatomaceous earth. So we're going to go back now to our lasagna gardening. So what I put in here first, as you can see, there's plenty of weeds in my yard. So I filled the bottom of this with a ton of clover and greens and high nitrogen weeds. Probably six inches or more, and then I stepped up and down on it. And then I put this layer of cardboard. And then next, I'm going to do a layer of some of the crappier soil that I can dig out of the forest here. Or you can do like a, a little higher clay soil, like a crap or a crappy quality, crappy quality bagged soil that's only like a buck or two, like an amendment. And then on top of this, you're going to put your four to six inches of your really high quality soil. And then a big mistake a lot of people make when they're doing seedlings is they put the seeds in first and then they water. That's a big no-no because when you water soil, in general, it scatters all over the place. You know, it, it just gets knocked about because it hasn't absorbed the water and it doesn't have any, uh, you know, any, any weight to it. So you really want to make sure that you carefully and thoroughly moisten your soil first and, uh, you know, get in there, get your fingers in there, get your fingers in there. And make sure that, you know, it's not wet on top and dry on the bottom because like when people see when it rains, they're like, yay, it rained. And actually that sprinkle didn't even penetrate a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch of the topsoil. So it can be very deceiving when you're watering and you really need to stick your finger down in there and make sure that the soil has actually been penetrated and given enough time to absorb the moisture. And another thing that will happen if you pre-water before you plant your seeds is you're going to see that this soil because it has so much organic material and sphagnum peat moss is that's going to expand so you're going to have more soil or visually it's going to seem that way now the one problem is if you have cats this is what i don't know what to do with except beat them with a car aerial they think that this is the best litter box in the world and mr chocho here and i have been fighting a big battle about what's his litter box and what's the garden cats can drive you crazy this way there's different ways to detour cats too but we'll save that for another video but if i get distracted as i'm doing this it's because i'm trying to keep him out of here because he is very willful as you know cats can be uh so we've moistened our soil then you go ahead and you can dig your trenches do your light layer of seeds and then gently cover those up uh, and pant them down and give it another spray of soil. The biggest mistake you can make with seeds is planting them too deeply or not planting them deep enough because either way, birds will steal them or they won't be able to, when they germinate, they have to work so hard to get up out of the soil that they'll never, you know, they'll never fully manifest into little plants for you. Uh, another th cool thing to do on the cheap that everyone knows about, get yourself a good permanent marker and it has to be a permanent marker. They sell them at the dollar store actually. And just take, this is a little plastic four inch garden pot that uh, Pepper came in. I took some utility scissors, cut it in pieces. And this is what I've used as labels. I mean, who really, who needs to buy labels when you can repurpose and save yourself? Cause every dollar you save in the near future here is going to be very important, my friends. Okay, so another another little quick advice. This is a combination green herb garden 
really stretch yourself in these times to try new things. Try new plants. Try new types of greens. Because uh, Americans are so limited. Their palates are so limited. And our cuisine is so limited to the massive amount of choices of things to eat out there that are highly nutritious and a lot easier to grow and a lot more prolific than our basic uh, familiar vegetables like your your spinaches and your lettuces and your cauliflowers. This is that purple, uh, a purple, uh, it's called purple cloud. It's a top of uh, tok choy. So it's all covered with diatomaceous earth. This, these are dandelions. Yes, now they sell dandelion greens. And you're probably thinking, he is a fool. Why did he buy dandelions? Well, believe it or not, where I live, they don't grow in our lawns and grow all over the place because we don't have that climate like in the Midwest and other places. Uh, it's also like a delicacy in Jamaica because it's not something that grows like a weed there because it's too hot. But dandelion greens are incredibly nutritious, insect resistant, disease resistant, incredible in a salad or cooked, and it was a survival food for many people during the Great Depression. You can Google that. It's a red leaf lettuce, and look at this beauty. Mayan jaguar. It's another type of lettuce. This is an endive. So the French, you know, this is their main salad vegetable in the summertime. All the French have endive in their garden. And it's a, it's a type of lettuce, but it has a slight bitter edge to it. And I, I love it. My Swiss chard, rainbow chard. So I planted some tall things in the center of my garden. So I did a combination greens herb garden. So I have my basil, which will get tall in the center, and some dill. Of course, you want to plant your taller plants in the center of the garden because then you can reach in and get them and they're not going to create visually or physically a barrier between you and your greens. Here's all my seedlings doing great. Again, a big variety of lettuce seeds that I had saved and uh, different broccolis. Uh, there's, a, there's a type of broccoli that I prefer over the standard broccoli because of our growing season here. And that's a, a baby broccoli or the, the Asian broccoli because unlike the standard broccoli where you get one or two big florets, but you have to wait till almost the end of the season, same with the cauliflower and Brussels sprouts, this smaller broccoli will produce smaller but more prolific florets uh, four to six weeks after you plant the seed. So that's really nice. And then you can let those go to bloom and collect those seeds and just keep that cycle going. Oh, here's another thing that a lot of people don't realize. So with your lettuces, you really are supposed to be planting your greens, especially the lettuce, the lettuces, every four to six weeks because the lettuce will, will reach its maturity and then it's going to try to flower or bolt. They call it bolting, just like with cilantro. And once it starts trying to flower and bolt, it is uh, gonna get bitter. It's gonna develop that, that milk substance when you cut the leaves, and it's just not gonna be very tasty. And it's at that point that you have two choices. You either pull them out and compost them, or you allow them to flower so you can collect seeds for the following year or the following season. But every four to six weeks, you should start another row of lettuce, your rows of lettuce, either in a bed that you haven't done things already, or in between the rows that you already have pre-existing lettuce. And this way you have a constant cycle of greens because people always, they, they don't realize this, and then five or six weeks into it, eight weeks into it, their lettuce is burned out and they've got a big dead garden that is just a wonderful host for weeds and ugliness. <laughs> okay, I think I've covered a lot. Sorry if I'm speaking too quickly. I hope you can hear me okay. I forgot I have my stupid headphones in that aren't so compatible with this phone. And uh, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. If you like my quick money-saving practical tips and garden wisdom, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe. It really helps. 
And if you can be kind enough sometimes to allow those ads to play, that kind of pays for me to keep this garden going and take the time to keep bringing this knowledge to you.